Guys, if you have not seen this video, Miyako's Revenge, go watch it on YouTube. It is probably one of the funniest pre-con animations I've seen, but it really summarizes like what Halloween Miyako's impact will be on the arena meta especially. Go check it out. It's a great video. I don't know the guy. I'm not plugging him for money. It's just a great video. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about the 5 mil login bonus. Not really. We're talking more about like the Halloween event that is about to drop because in my last video, I was like, oh man, the Halloween event wasn't announced in that last announcement and so we're probably going to be getting it in October. Nope, they pulled a fast one on me. I now look like a clown. We are getting Halloween at the end of September, I guess, which is an early Halloween, which is cool. But yeah, in this video, I really want to talk about like the impact of H Shinobu, H Misaki, H Miyako and like the limited hell that's about to come again. All right. And so without further ado, before we get into this guy over here again, a 5 million download bonus. This is massive. This is really great to see. And without Precon, I'd be nobody. So thank you to CR for actually bringing Precon across from JP. And thank you to everyone who's been watching, especially from the start. And this milestone is just so awesome. 5 million downloads, 1.5k jewels. Log in today or else you're going to miss out. All right. And so with that out of the way, let's get into the Halloween event itself. So, and so we've got Halloween Shinobu coming in first as well as Halloween Miyako. And guys, I will do a more in-depth video for H Shinobu, H Misaki, and H Miyako. And the reason is because they are quite impactful on the meta. And so it's probably worth actually having like a separate video for them. And so coming back to this, Halloween Shinobu is is a limited character so she will be on rotation like yearly. Focus ban is coming out in about five days time and it's going to last for 18 days and then we're going to have H Misaki after that. On the other hand we have Halloween Miyako. Uh Actually, why is that Halloween Miyako up here? But this Halloween Miyako is our farmable welfare unit. So you can play through the story, play through the event, and then you can get the Halloween Miyako. Halloween Miyako is a fantastic welfare unit. She is like in the level of Summer Kokoro. Maybe not at like peak Summer Kokoro because Summer Kokoro is very useful in both Arena and CB. But Halloween Miyako is definitely a massive unit, especially for PvP against those mages. And so like the previous welfare units, Halloween Miyako will be joining your party if you defeat the boss five times at any difficulty level. And so combined with the shards over here, so we got Miyako at 25 shards and 40 shards for line up two and four. But combined with the hard nodes, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to get Halloween Miyako at about like three stars and almost at four stars. And so if you're close enough to four stars, I would probably recommend going for four star Halloween Miyako anyway. It's probably going to cost you about like 60 divine amulets. And I think it's a great investment, especially if you are an avid PVPer. All right, so that's it for the Halloween Miyako. So this one is a really big one because this is pretty much the first of its kind. And hopefully this will Assist. And so with the trick or putting Halloween event, we are going to start getting these quest player EXP events for 1.5 times. And what this means is that it's at this point where we start thinking about, well, should we sink stamina into these event quests then? I think this is massive, especially for players that are trying to catch up in the levels you are getting 1.5 times per stamina spent. However, for people more at the level cap, you can kind of ignore this. Like you can go on with your hard mode shard farming and stuff like that. And so that's really nice to see. We finally do have this. I do think it's awesome because it helps the newer players or like the players who aren't as willing to refresh like try get up to speed but just to wrap this event up we are also going to be getting yori shards so yori i think you guys already know you can only get her shards right now via cb we are going to be getting farmable hard nodes for her as well as her memory shards over there and so honestly that's really nice because i don't think we've seen too much of yori in action yet and so guys i'm just going to keep going down and like save this halloween shinobu for last because there's quite a lot of discussion around this one so down 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 we are getting hard quest drops times two that is awesome to see. There's literally nothing to say. It's just, oh, my favorite time of the month. Dungeon Mana times two, Grotto times two. And I don't think there is actually anything else that is going to be, oh, okay, yep, this one. I missed this. I knew I was missing something. The Guildhouse storage, the default storage is going to be increased from 100 to 200, or rather, let's say that the cap is being increased by 100. But on top of that, the maximum storage is going to be increased from 300 to 600. And I know I've been wanting this for a while. We've just been getting like so much freaking furniture. This is exactly what we need right now. But otherwise, just having a look through all of these guys over here, I think we've covered it all. And so let's start talking about the Halloween Shinobu. <laughs> it, it didn't take too long to get us here. Okay, Halloween Shinobu, Halloween Miyako, Halloween Misaki, and this guy over here. I've shown you guys this sheet like so many freaking times. As always, it's going to be in the description below, but we are at about here. I know it does say August, but I just have not downloaded the most recent copy, which has aligned because I think especially at the start of the game, we were following an accelerated pace. However, despite the accelerated pace, we have still been getting the events sequentially like correctly. So for example, we just got Luna Tower and we just had the Matsuri banner, aka the Makoto banner. And before that, we had Tomo. And before that, we had the 110 free gacha pools for S Tamaki. So in my 
my opinion, I think it's all okay. I think it's really good that like they are still following it on the timeline, just not for the timings that we were expecting. But anyway, I digress. Let's come back to this and why like the Halloween events are really impactful. At the start of the video, I referred to this as limited help because like it's got the Halloween Shinobu, Halloween Masaki, Christina, skip two banners, and then you've got all of this. A lot of back-to-backs, a lot of pain, and then we've also got Mwimi packed onto the end of there. This is uh this this is the true limited hell. Well, we're not quite there yet because we are still technically uh two, five, five banners off. However, there are a lot of decisions that we need to start making here, especially because of this like bad boy over here. So right now we are here. Halloween Shinobu, Halloween Misaki. Halloween Shinobu, Halloween Misaki, generally speaking, in a nutshell, you can summarize them as PvP meta. Halloween Shinobu is 100% PvP attacking meta. In some cases, people do use Halloween Shinobu for defense, but like for the most part, Halloween Shinobu is hailed as like, uh, I would I would say as dominant as Ilya. On the other hand, we have Halloween Misaki right after that. And generally speaking, Halloween Misaki is kind of like a defensive arena meta unit. Again, I'll explain why in a separate video, like I will go through an evaluation, but Halloween Misaki defensive, not really that important, right? And so from like a PVP perspective, if you are an avid PVP player, you are gonna be wanting to pull on these two at least. However, if you are more focused on CB, then you could theoretically skip the two of these. With that being said though, some of my friends have been saying like, oh, Halloween Misaki is actually used in CB at some point. I'm like, okay, fair enough. But to be honest, me personally, I have not done the work to find the Halloween Misaki. Like as you can see up here, I'm still preparing for the CB that is coming in like 12 hours. And on that note, I'm sorry, I haven't gotten the CB prep video out. I've just been elderly swamped. But anyway, back to it, Halloween Misaki potentially for CB and then two arena units over here. However, we have Christina coming right after that. And so again, Christina is a must pull for everybody. She is used in CB, she is used in PVP, she is used in Luna Tower, she is used everywhere. She is like Makoto, but better, with a lot of damage, with a lot of uh, everything, actually. She, she's a lot of things. But what I am trying to say here is that if you are broke, you will not be rolling on Halloween Shinobu or Halloween Misaki's banner. You will either be saving for Christina's banner here, or you could be saving to get Christina on the Prefez banner over here in the November. I personally don't think that this is going to be in November. I think it's going to be in December leading into January. And so if you are willing to skip Christina over here, then you can roll for H Shinobu or H Misaki. And then you can save up and roll for Christina over here in the New Year's limited banner, the one that's featuring New Year's Yui. Because in this banner, not only are you able to spark Christina, you will also be able to go for New Year's Yui. Now, this is really freaking important because after that, we also have the New Year's Hiyori, which is probably less of a prize but Valentine Shizuru, which is massive. Valentine Shizuru, she's a buff machine. I believe she like grants buffs the first of her kind, maybe. But essentially, she is extremely important for clan battle. And so if you are clan battle focused, you are going to be looking at that one over there. And then obviously after that, we have Mwimi, who is as essential as Christina. Mwimi, to be honest, is like really freaking dominant. But like, let's talk about that another day because like there is a chance that you could get her in that th free 140 gacha pool. I mean, I thought I was going to be getting the summer Tawaki for free for that 110 10 free gacha pulls, but like it freaking took me 240. And so that is exactly why I say you got to save for Sparks, man. You have got to save for Sparks. You really need to have enough for the Spark for Christina. You really do need to have it for Shizuru as well. And you 100% need it for Muimi, of course, accounting for those free 140 pulls. So technically it's 160 to Spark over here, but like I digress. Now, that is what most people know. I'm pretty sure that was a recap of like the main knowledge that everyone knows. Instead, what we have here is X Chica and X Ayane. Because what I have not discussed is X Chica, X Ayane, and New Year's Yui. For the most part, New Year's Yui and X Chica are both extremely important units. Unfortunately, Christmas Ayane is not overly good until she gets her UE, and even then, she's not like that amazing. There definitely are going to be uses for her, but like the main focus is going to be on NY Yui and X Chica. And so the thing about X Chica is that she is quite important in CB and Arena, both of them, CB in particular, if I'm not wrong. However, she is only important later on in the game but you can't roll her later on in the game unless you're willing to wait one whole year. This is very, very much like your Summer Kiaru kind of scenario. If you don't roll for Summer Kiaru in June, you're not going to be getting her until June-ish next year. And so yeah, that's for Christmas Chica. On the other hand, New Year's Yui. I would say that New Year's Yui is already impactful the moment you get her. Essentially with New Year's Yui in your team, like your team cannot die. A lot of people refer to her as like an invincibility cheat code. And so you can already imagine a lot of places where that could be helpful. On top of that, the only 
one I haven't talked about is New Year's Hiori, which is also a really strong CB attacker. But she is not like a Valentine Shizuru must need or like a Christina must have or like a Muimi must have. And so with all of these units covered, let's have a look at what we should take and what we should skip. Today, if you are broke as hell, you are not going to be rolling anywhere over here. You could go for the Christina, but like if you fail to get her, then you might not make the spark over here. However, if you are maintaining income like arena income or whatever, and remember we do have Luna Tower now, and you are confident that you can save up a spark between this Christina and this New Year's Yui banner, then I would say go for it. But again, in this period of time for CB, Christina is top priority. Then moving on, I would say that New Year's Yui is probably your top priority. And if you are broke, you're going to be skipping on Chika, Ayane, and Hiyori. From a CB perspective, you are going for Valentine Shizuru, and then you're going to be going for Muimi right after that. Okay, on the other hand, let's have a look for Arena. So we are here. And so again, if you are an Arena focused player, I would say you're probably going to be looking at trying your luck on Halloween Shinobu. And again, it's because she is impactful. She is massive. She is going to be like Ilya. If you are super rich, you're probably going to be going for the Halloween Misaki as well. But like Halloween Misaki is nowhere near that like level of meta impact. But between Halloween Misaki and Christina, you're definitely going to be going Christina. On the other hand, your other option is to go Halloween Shinobu, Halloween Misaki, skip Christina and go for Christina in the New Year's Yui banner. And then after that, you can actually skip through a whole bunch of stuff and just go for Muimi then. And that, in my opinion, is probably probably the smartest thing to do if you are chasing meta. Of course, if you're not chasing meta and you're chasing waifu, then just freaking go for whoever you want. I'm probably going for Halloween Misaki because she's cute and that's kind of it. But yeah, guys, we are about to enter another storm like this storm over here. I just really wanted to warn you guys if you guys are thinking of sinking or going really deep for Halloween Shinobu and Halloween Misaki. And so somehow that freaking dragged my video into way longer than it should have been. And so let's wrap this bad boy up. I got a secret message and that is early Halloween because somehow our Halloween event ended up in September. That's cool. It's kind of cool. I like how they did it. I think like as long as we're going according to schedule, it's fine with me. And so if you guys could drop the secret message early Halloween down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, please consider a like, subscribe, follow, whatever, support the channel by becoming a member. But as Halloween Miyako once said, I'm going to get revenge on everybody. But not only that, she also said that all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.